Thank you, Thank Chair, you. and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, wave on to the committee uh, hearing today on your agenda. I really appreciate that and giving me this opportunity. Um, you know, I'm here because this uh, is there's a major uh, issue in my district and in the state of Hawaii as it relates to water and clean water, and, and that is our cesspools and our um, very disturbing state of our uh, water treatment facilities throughout the state of Hawaii. You know, I think Hawaii in, in many cases can be um, viewed as a best example of a developed nation which has, uh, or, or um, uh, one of the worst uh, sewage disposal and contamination problems that exist uh, that affect our freshwater supply, our streams, and our nearshore environments. And I appreciate the testimony of um, the testifiers today it has a lot of great information here uh, for me uh, to take back to my district. You know, in Hawaii, Chair, we have about 88,000 cesspools that still exist throughout the state. They discharge about 53 million gallons daily of raw, untreated sewage into the, um, uh, the groundwater that ends up in our freshwater supply, our streams, our nearshore marine environments. Uh, we have um, AOCs from the EPA throughout uh, Hawaii. Um, we violate the Safe uh, Clean Drinking Water Act, the EPA's requirement to, um, um, uh, I guess, get rid of large capacity cesspools since 2005 that have been in existence in Hawaii. Um, and, and it's a dire situation that we have. So um, I'm here to learn about what we can do in Hawaii to address this. And my question uh, is to Ms. Hammer uh, in regarding um, your testimony. You know, there's a tremendous opportunity in this Congress to address America's infrastructure, uh, including the needs of our wastewater. As I just described, Hawaii has great wastewater needs um, and we lead the, the country in the number of cesspools uh, that uh, exist throughout the Hawaiian Islands. In addition, we have wastewater treatment facilities that have not been maintained and it's facing a crisis. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how in Hawaii we can address these problems, especially in rural communities like the second congressional district that do not have the ability to connect to sewer lines or where local geology, um, like a shallow water table near uh, coastal areas like you mentioned earlier, uh, make it difficult to upgrade? Thank you for the question. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, Hawaii is not the only place in this country where access to sanitation is um, a dire issue. We've also seen um, serious problems in tribal communities in the Southwest, as well as um, communities in the Black Belt of Alabama. Um, there are technical solutions that are um, being developed. Um, you know, I would refer you to the work of Catherine Flowers, who's a true champion on this issue. Um, in terms of policy solutions, um, you know, these are the kinds of problems that we see in rural areas, low-income areas that, tech, you know, traditionally do not have the rate base um, to take out a traditional clean water SRF loan that they would then have to repay. Um, there's, it's very difficult for them for many reasons, which is one reason why it's so important to bring more additional subsidization and grants into the SRF program um, so that we don't have a two-tier sanitation system in this country where wealthy communities have functional infrastructure and small rural disadvantaged communities, you know, have, have cesspools that are failing. Um, so that would be my, you know, my primary um, recommendation is to make sure that, um, that more grant funding is available. Thank you. That, that's something I'll try and push for in this Congress. Uh, with the remaining use of my time, Ms. Colson, um, my congressional district comprises eight of the main Hawaiian Islands, uh, many, many small communities, former plantation communities. Uh, how can uh, we make the Clean Water State Revolving Fund more flexible for small communities in my district? Thank you for that question. Um, I think it's important to recognize the impact of federal mandates on these small communities and in the SRFs to ensure that we can meet the needs of those small communities. And one of the aspects is technical assistance to ensure that they're able to not just uh, get the water infrastructure funded, 
but also to maintain and operate it and to build the, the rates that they need uh, to renew that infrastructure when it's reached its useful life. Thank you, Chair.